everyone, this is the Mad Salvi letting you know that unless things are proven with Twitter posts and stuff like that and actual, have actual proof behind it, treat everything in this thing as a theory. I will mark try to mark certain things as news and theory and everything like that to kind of let you guys understand, but also, you know, use a critical mind. And I hope you do enjoy. Darkness continues. Of course, other people are wondering what's going on. You haven't been living under the rock for quite a while. Exact reason, no one knows. It seems that Nidikudo wanted to do damage control for quarter four. That's what a lot of people are saying. They nuked all posts dating two months and older. Uh, nuked it, cut off posts, made it so that you have to actually get permission to post. We've, you know, all this information chronicling all the things that have been knocked out of it. And, you know, it's just kind of interesting because the shy sand effect is in full effect. People already have things archived. People will already have things archived. People will already have things ready and going, ready to go for all this stuff and it's just kind of a little bit of an interesting look. Hope you guys are doing well today. We're going to talk about um, something that's happening with Hollow Stars, which is good in comparison to what's going to be happening with Nidhi Sanji, which I will go over in the video as well. Uh, In-person tickets for the fifth anniversary concert sold out immediately. Here's Sheehan barely missing that opportunity to advertise three, mi three minutes after the tickets went on sale. And what does this mean? This means that Hollow Stars right here, uh, they had their tickets Xian, which is, you know, part of, I, my guess is, you know, trying to make sure that this all goes well, this is the Hollow Stars uh, thing, um, you know, Movian, Hollow Life Pro, it's sold out. It's already sold out. Basically, they, they put it, they showed that it was on sale and it already sold out. So this is the difference between a company that supports their livers, even the male livers, because Hollow Life has been prim primarily female based. Hollow Stars is a personal project of Yago, the CEO of Hollow Live and Cover, and he has been supporting it wholeheartedly throughout the whole way. And uh, this is what happens when you support your talents. This is what happens when even you give talents that a lot of people are like, ah, it's not going to work with Hollow Live because that's what people said about Hollow Stars. It's not going to work with Hollow Live. Look at them now. Look at what they're doing now. They're working really well. Freaking their fifth anniversary tickets were sold out. As far as I heard, there's actually discontent among fans with how small the venue is. I also didn't hear they fixed the issue overseas fans buy, to buy tickets. Hope cover gives them more chance to make money. They had like two years to prepare. It's all true. I'm not sure the general sale was uh, foreigner friendly since it did sell out the minute it opened. Feel bad for the people who already made arrangements to go and left without a ticket. Hopefully it's just a small test to run and find out if the boys are pretty sizable fans. Yeah, basically it, it, it's probably a test. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of agencies, including Hollow Life, including other ones, go for small venues first then they bump up the venues so there might even be like like a mid fest like somewhere you know maybe in the summer or something like that like a summer fest for them and uh you know seeing if the venue will actually work and they might get a, a larger venue by how quickly this thing sold of course sometimes you also have scalpers you also have those type of people that do it so that is a risk that you run what do the numbers mean let's take a look at the numbers of nidhi sanji en summer jam powered by anime expo so this is an anime expo direct one of course uh follow up to michi lot's post here it's basically a post about the whole summer fest uh post on reddit please forgive my mistakes i wanted to share something that i've been having fun with after seeing top loquats uh and post about the ticket sales at the minute i'm hoping to hear back from peacock theater about their booking fee so accurate profit calculations are on hold as far as my research, they could be anywhere from $50,000 to $120,000 for booking. Uh, and that uh, the seats need to be sold to make a profit, but 3.2 uh, to 16.5% of seats uh, for the three concerts. If you can't get exact cost, then I have some ways to estimate things later based on theater prices in LA. For whatever the price is, however, it does seem that they currently are or are projected to make a profit from initial cost to hire the venue unless the percentage of seats needs to be sold above 40%. This projected profit I worked out is between $20,000 and $65,000 for three concerts combined. That's the initial profit and does not include the cost to put on the concerts, any split with Anime Expo, any split with staff and libraries, etc. Maximum initial profit they could make if they sell out all three is 472 k So in comparison, it's only 4 to 14%. Thank you, Top Loquat, for the after one hour screenshots. After one day screenshots, we're going to take a look at both of those. All the other data was gathered from the Nidhi Sanji Summer Jam, the Show C Flicks, and all this other stuff. So please let me know if there's any any other specific information. So this is the information that they got it from. This is the after one day, you know, this is the, the actually, you know, things that happen after one day. If you remember correctly, there wasn't that much sold out. This is the after one week as well. Uh, this thing after, you know, things aren't being sold out after a day. The ticket summer jam information, of course, here with group one, group two, and the World Connect LA, July 5th, 6th, and 7th. Uh, the same thing here. Uh, Welcome to Wonder World Concert LA, powered by everything, basically the same thing. The Wonder World LA is on July 7th. So all this information is gathered here for this person mentioning here. I just wanted to let you guys know where all the information is gathered. And what they're saying, they're showing here, the tickets aren't really being sold out very much. 
After seven days, not very much has been sold out. For the boys, for Crow Noir, for the girls at the top, boys in the middle, Crow Noir at the bottom. So things are still selling. But um, here's what they say right here. After one hour, girls 346, boys 439, Crow Noir 502. After one week, girls 413, boys 481, Crow Noir 542. So they didn't go too horrible. Uh, girls Orchestra 647, Pit 80. You know, the Pit is it, Pit is the first thing to sell out, almost always. Uh, tickets sold per hour after initial hour. After 8, 3.9, boys 0, Cronoir 0. After one week, 0. 0.25, 0. 0.24, the, all those percentages there. Money earned after one hour, 22,000, 27,000, 24,000. So they may actually, uh, not sell out and still make money, which is interesting to know, uh, how those things work. After one hour, split Girls Orchestra, Pit, Orchestra Pit, and Orchestra Pit. They have pretty much an even split. After one week, girls 25, 570. It add 30, 3,500, add 1,900, and add 1,825 to that. Orchestra, you see the splits here. The projected ticket sales percentage of max, 827, 20.7%, 741, 18.25. At the end of t- ticket sales, that's a projection. Of course, that is a huge, huge grain of salt. That is a huge, huge assumption that they sell little or that they sell a lot. That they sell, you know, more than they're selling now. It's a huge assumption overall. Uh, combined two sixty seats at the back, the mix section are not counted. Probably reserved for where the sound engineers will be. Yeah, that's usually where the sound engineers are. I've been to the what is now known as the Peacock Theater in the past, and they have sound engineers in like the back section of the middle. So that's probably where it's going to be. Girls group one, boys group two, Crow Noir. Website says no refunds or exchanges. I found seats were reserved at one time and then available again later. So, you know, the the it says no refunds, but there's there's got to be ways. Like some people can just um, do uh, what you call it, uh, chargebacks and things like that. Red box is accessible seats that are not counted. Is back here. Uh, green dot is available orchestra standard. Uh, yellow dot is available pit. Gray dot is, you know, the things that are sold. Orange dot is tickets sold within the first hour, but now available. Canceled. Oh, okay. Some of them are canceled, I guess. Blue dot is bought after the first hour. So they have all this information here. It's very good to have this information here because I kind of like numbers. I like crunching them numbers. And it's it's satisfying to see these numbers. Now, we have another part here uh, where we are um, taking a look at all the concert numbers. This is the another one that was pointed 17 hours ago. Uh, remaining after one week. The mix is probably going to be back here. The mixing area is probably back there. Um, and like I said, you know, some things have been given back, it seems like. So, yeah, in the very back, they don't, they're don't they not selling at all. So that isn't sold out. That just means they're not selling at all. That means that they're not a part of being sold at all. Just want to give you guys that. They're only selling tickets for the wedges and the green dots and tiny sections with yellow dots. Everything on the top half was never booked. Ticket sites, bad at visual math, but yeah, it doesn't look great overall. We are going over something real quick of Face Connect. It's totally beating Nijisanji Ien. Right here, we have this picture, which is Face Connect's uh, Uruka, Uruka channel. Uh, she was playing a $20 violin from Amazon and doing some uh, some sticky notes and things like that. She had 1,271 uh, concurrent viewers at the time of this picture. Like I said, it could be higher or lower near the end, whatever. I always say take these pictures with a grain of salt because it can be taken at the best moment and the Nidhi Sanji ones can be taken at the worst moment. So that's another thing that I want to mention. Not that surprising, to be honest, all the Nidhi Sanji dramas and their poor handling of PR really killed whatever goodwill fans had for them. As a result, the fans or market portion are spreading uh, and looking for new replacements, hence why there's an increase in CCV of other EMV tubers, but Nidhi EN stays down. Other agencies more evenly promote their talents. That's another thing. Like, Hololive is really good at promoting their talents. Uh, people like Face Connect, people like um, Idle EN, other ones are really good at promoting their talents as well. And it's just a small little smidgen of what's going on. I am going to preface this by saying one very important thing. This is a Sayu thing. I'm going to mention Sayu. This is going to be all about Sayu right now. But I want to mention one very important thing. Do not go and bug Sayu. Do not go and bug the person who mentioned Sayu's uh, the thing and mentioned the issue that went on. I am not going to put the video out there. I'm not going to put any of the clips of what's happened with Sayu because it is a very sensitive topic. It is a very sensitive moment for her. She was very uh, raw, very emotional, uh, as she, as you know, it's very understandable. I want to respect her privacy with that, and I want to respect the, the community that asked me not to show it. So I won't show that, but I will show some things that people have posted on the subreddit talking about this. 
So I just wanted to put that out there. Regarding recent events, a general reminder that we do not know anything about the livers' personal lives and their relationships with other content creators. It's as simple as that. Like, for all we know, Matar and Sayu could be best friends. We have a group chat where they call uh, twice a week for hours. We don't know. Do not assume things. Uh, Lyra and Doki still talk. Who knows? These are people behind the personas. Consistent speculation, whoever the click is, 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 is hurtful. Please, no matter how active a VTuber community is there, uh, is not, 4chan is not a credible source. Yeah, things like that. Uh, is immature and harmful to do the boy to the boycott, but it actually starts to cast out on people's grievances if the, if people start actually uh, hurting people like Sayu and things like that. It becomes too obsessive. Some people have a healthy level of investment into this. It's a boycott, not your own personal, uh, you know, war. There are people and victims that need you in their own ways. I uh, I know your heart's probably in the right place, but that doesn't help if your heads are firmly up your own butts. Riku's a prick, but don't hurt the talents, even if they're former talents. Please. Should those v Sayu VOD be posted here? Heck no. It should not. Not be posted at all. Feels weird to share the don't share if anything out of respect for her. She doesn't need a reminder of what happened. Exactly. She doesn't need the reminder. I firmly against it. The a-holes decided to come and cause a situation without her shouldn't be more attention than should have gotten. Very clearly stated that she wants to put that part of her past behind her, keeping the VOD in circulation, would only serve to keep dredging it back up. Absolutely. Nah, she removed it for a reason and will most likely post it again after adding sensitive parts out. If someone posts a clip, just ignore it. Ask to remove the person who posted it. Exactly. Do not post clips. If she has removed the VOD, it's because she does not want that part of the VOD to be shown. I will not show it. I will respect her wishes to not show it, but I am doing this as a PSA. I am doing this as a public service announcement. Do not go to an ex Niji Livers thing and start talking about their past. Do not talk about their their you know their their past lives or anything like that talk about their person their, their current life it is extremely rude to talk about someone's past life when they are trying to move on and trying to do something good i'm outside consider sending some positive comments i'm sorry today's stream wasn't what i wanted it to be i'm not really the type to cry uh so i'm sorry i was sad and i'm sorry i can't just be okay with plenty to care about it's the most frustrating thing to me but that being reminded constantly about you know um about how excited i am for what happened that made me uh, quit and consider quitting for good. A lot of it has to do with dealing with people, with old friends, with people I wish I could have been friends with, and being in the space where I'm constantly reminded of how choices have brought me to this position where an, a, an opinion follows me everywhere and can't have a normal first impressions like everyone else. I wish I could move on. I wish it wouldn't hurt me anymore. I wish I wouldn't feel sad seeing people I was ghosted by because of what happened. Make friends with everyone I'm friends with. It's my own fault for making this, the choices I did speak out, but I didn't ask for some martyr to be some martyr. I didn't ask uh, to make old mama's life sad because now their beautiful model is seen and used as a tool. I do hate being me. She shouldn't. She absolutely shouldn't. I hate that all I can do is make things worse. She doesn't make things worse, in my opinion. I know sharing my feelings only does that. It's an endless cycle and things will not get better. Now, in my opinion, being raw, being emotional, being all that is nothing bad. Um, I hate that this happened to her. I hate that people did this to her. Uh, I hate that she feels the way that she does, but I can understand the way she feels and I fully support her. And this is more support than dredging up any kind of drama. It isn't getting better for her mentally, is it? A lot of people still martyr and their antagonism toward Niji. She doesn't deserve that. She doesn't want that. So stop, please. If you're trying to make her into a martyr, please stop. Someone who's content, they watch only for doing cool things. She does sometimes play into it. However, it does not excuse people constantly bringing past up. It, she doesn't have a chat mod. It's exactly the type of situation a mod should prevent. Never mind. I read the apology post in the sub. Her mod did take action, but unfortunately, strike sound effect take full force. Uh, reading this after seeing Doki and Mint follow one another. Stay in the box. No, stay in the box. Get out of my head. Good, sir. May I know what happened? Uh, basically, she had a moment where someone brought up her past, brought up, you know, the, the, the past life, and it made her sad again. People who just... Can't keep their mouth shut. Want to create an error. Nothing going on. As simple as just ignore the haters. Grow the F up. You know nothing. You don't have a sliver of empathy about their situation. You're probably tired of Sayu airing out her grievances. So that you don't follow her anymore. So you probably want to portray yourself as something that understands far more than you actually do. I can never understand what Sai is going through. Because I have never been in that position. Where I am a huge VTuber. Had something happen. And then have people try to treat you as a martyr, try to treat you as this or the other. I do not, I, I can empathize with her feeling the cancel culture thing, with her feeling that, because I've gone through that as well. But I do not know exactly what she's going through. And I will not pretend that I do, because that is just me having a stick up my own ass, having my head up my own ass. And I, I'm, I'm not the type of person to do that. Here's the person who accidentally did it. Uh, just to explain, I've been wanting to catch up with for a while. Did learn through drama tubers. I wanted to watch her as a streamer on her own and plans to bring up any drama. Previously, I watched the Mint collab with Henya. In that stream, there was one particular commenter essentially tried to bring outside drama involving Warner Brothers. 
try to sue YouTuber or mods or something. I talked to them and tried to tell them to keep that stuff out. So while watching Sai's stream, I noticed the person was also watching, but didn't know if it was them. So I asked if it was, but my mistake was I used Mint's name, not realizing she was reading some uh, every single comment. I'm used to some comments not being noticed. I'm a relative newbie, so I didn't grasp the rules like that. A mod gave me a warning, and Sai started talking to me about it. And the other commenter tried bringing out the outside drama, but I apologized sincerely and we we're willing to move on and all was well. Until that other commenter not only kept bringing it up, but got aggressive and I think accused me of essentially disappearing from chat, even though I kept commenting. Then she went off, angry at this commenter, and that's when the floodgates opened. So to clarify, it was a stupid move. I had no malicious intent. It was not an indie sister looking to sabotage a stream like a mustache twirling villain. I felt lightheaded and dizzy for the past hour because of my deep remorse and I wish I could go back and stop it. And this is what matters. What matters is that they are apologetic about it. You are still mad at me, I understand, but I wanted to clear things up so I don't become known as a hater for this incident with it following me everywhere I go, but also to offer my deep apologies to you all for playing a part in ruining this stream as well, myself included, we were looking forward to. Take that as your lesson. If you're not sure about something, then don't say anything or bring it into chat. Or if silence is not your option, simply calling out their action is against the rules, only one sentence. Other chatter, they feel annoyed. There's always a block option. You know, there's always the option to block, very true. Just don't bring stuff up like that. Advice for the future, simply don't engage in personal talks with streamers chat. Chat is very much a part of the show. Derating it is a disservice, not only to the streamer, but also to other watchers. Don't want the vote, but seriously, what did you think was going to happen, even if you're not a needy sister? That action you did with some consequences that either temporarily or permanently stuck to someone's mind. Uh, Sayu had a lot, suffered a lot, and you just did something dumb. It is something dumb, but they apologized at least. I wanted to cover that part. Uh, there's a couple more things that's going to be going on here. Uh, really angry right now but because, you know, the person is saying, you know, going into Sayu's stream about what I talked about, about the activity stuff. And... They said stuff like it sucks what, what they did to Zion, the model was wasted. Don't do that. Don't ever do that. Like I said, just do not go in there and start talking about previous lives, please. Don't remind her of that company because you aren't watching her because you're a fan. You're watching her because you're Nidhi Sanji. You hate Nidhi Sanji. It's very bad to pity watch uh, like you have an idea what affects them. You want to move on and she can't be happy with people reminding her all the time. Let her heal. Stop using her as a punchline against Niji. But her cool moments and her happy moments, just enjoy those moments, please. Same with Mint, same with Matara, same with Doki, same with everybody. Do not remind them of Nidhi Sanji again. It was a dark part of their lives. It was a dark part of their, their past. Just don't invite just don't invite that kind of thing again. Don't realize behind the character is a person. It's not like a voice actor voicing an anime character. Those are some streamers who play a slight character. Uh, something happened in the latest stream. Yeah, talking about Zion model being wasted. She doesn't want the messiah or martyr of VTubing. She doesn't want people to watch her because of that. They want She wants to be watched like every other VTuber, like every other uh, content creator for their content, not for things that they did in the past, you know? And basically the last thing I want to cover is like, yeah, stop talking about other Nijis on Sayu's chat. Don't talk about other Niji Sanji members. Don't talk about how it sucks that you know this and that and the other. I'm not going to mention Niji Sanji members here because I don't want to perpetuate that nastiness. But please don't do that. It's not right. It, it, it hurt me to hear her yesterday. It hurt me to hear that. And that's why I will not ever post any of those VODs of her being that way. Now, if she's correcting somebody, I will post those VODs. But the VODs of yesterday, it felt raw. It felt emotional. I will not post those VODs ever. Uh, stop talking about how Zion model was wasted. Yeah, bro, it's just not right. It's very sad. Just don't do that, please. Here we go with Anime Impulse Seattle 2024 on Twitter, especially tags. This post didn't have any intention of comparing Anidhi Sanji to Hollow Stars. This post is just personal matter. Of course, if it doesn't have, if it only has pictures of a post, by the way, and it doesn't have uh, the actual evidence behind it, like an actual tweet, etc., that they're showing, uh, you know, they have a link to. Uh, treat it as a possible uh, rumor. Treat it as a rumor. Treat it as, you know, someone possibly making screenshots up. We don't know until someone actually shows what's going on. It's personal matter about me rambling about Anime Impulse. Uh, after scrolling over Twitter, I found difference between both of them. The Tempest side, they have their own tags, Tempest Impulse. Meanwhile, for some needy sisters, needy livers, uh, using the tag Anime Impulse uh, Seattle 2024, even though it was just a small thing. Personally, think Hollow Stars are way more organized, so their fans could search something way easier, unlike Nidhi Sandy tossing them just to the wolves, it seems like. For example, uh, I went looking for a merch catalog uh, at, at Anime Impulse Seattle 2024, but most of them filled with Nidhi stuff, and it, it's kind of a mess. Not only that, it overshadowed with uh, some other events like booth, anime cosplay, lineup, etc. Having their own tweet tag made things easier. So here is basically a comparison of Anime Impulse Seattle 2024 to, to take a look at uh, the Nidhi Sanji stuff. And then we have on the other one, Anim Tempest Impulse 2024 to take a look at the MVP stuff happening, uh, meet and greet staff, 
and, and Tempest Impulse 2024 to kind of give you a little bit easier path to finding things Tempest related, which makes sense. Overall, it makes sense. Uh, looking at this, it makes sense. Don't expect anything from them. Anyways, they always uh, think too little. Lack of emotion, attention to small things that could turn something bad. I don't even know if they have online marketing or not. Past until now, it looks lazy. Yeah, a lot of it looks lazy. That's the thing I'm saying. Pretty good analysis is what sub should be done about more now. It's, it's seen as criticizing, but also constructive advice. Uh, might bother a lot of people. You're trying to browse the anime impulse tag for it to be flooded with Nidhi Sanji stuff. Exactly. It, that's the issue. That's the issue that I think a lot of people have with this. Have your own tag. Create your own tag. They're, you're big enough. You should create your own tag. It was easy for Nidhi Sanji to make their own tags, like how Tempest tags work. They could easily go Nidhi Impulse or Nidhi N Impulse or Luxium Impulse or whatever it is, you know? Easier between fans and visitors, general sense of browse whatever they want. Besides the point of perhaps management, it's just too lazy to do it. If I were Nidhi Sanji, would totally make use of the fan base to bombard the tag with Nidhi Sanji content so more eyes will be on it. That's probably why they did it. They wanted it to be bombarded with more Nidhi Sanji stuff. But it seems lazy, in my opinion. There was a bit of drama that happened overnight. This is uh, the girlfriend of Nighttime Audio, the one that was alleged to be Roma. Right now, it's still a rumor. It's, of course, still a rumor. I'll mention it again. Rumor, 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 just so you can get it and, you know, understand it. She had posted a post here about Nighttime's girlfriend message, which, which is the actual person mentioning it, and the mods deleted it, or an auto mod deleted it because it was a brand new account, etc. And they brought it back after she put it. She messaged it, messaged them about it. Understand, I'm glad it's up again now. It's up again now about the whole thing. I covered it in a previous video. Not going to go over it too much more. Not saying the claims were true, but trying to spin stuff that no one could really verify as proof is a bit of a stretch. But the first OP of this conversation, aka Mandy, etc., etc., did. Um, I don't like that these people are uh, putting names out there. This is a name of a person. I'm going to uh, pretty much try to censor it as best I can in the video that I'm going to put out. And this person saying, you know, showing the true colors and all that kind of stuff, because again, they're kind of doxing the person here. And I don't like that either. I mean, you can be angry. You could be putting whatever here. But from what I understand, this is a dox and I don't like that. A little bit of info here. It's a bit of an information post and that I'll leave it as an information post. I'll leave it as something just to give you guys a bit of information about what's going on. Uh, wanted to post this for a while. Things are shaking up and everybody is now in time. Link is all the information I found, gathered, discussed about. Serious, informative, random. So this is basically someone that has chronicled everything that's happened on the Kurosanji that is of importance. And I'll show you what they've chronicled right now. I don't think I'll be posting much for a while. Let's not give them any reason to do the same, you know, because of recent events. Headstrong against Needy Sisters. And of course, you know, Needy Sisters are headstrong against others as well. Uh, not exactly, but at least they don't have a right solid platform. It's like, um, I, yeah, basically don't give them a platform. Reminds me of how effing funny it is that NYF Co. got shut down. F that website and anyone who used it as a safe place. That's impressive archive. Holy heck. Uh, what happened with it? It's, it's a safe place to dox people. So this is this is their 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 full on everything, like all their stuff, all their stuff here. They have all the information. They just chronicled it. So if anyone wanted to see everything, there you go. I've, I've covered everything that's in here. I've covered everything that's in here, so I'm not going to cover it again. But they have an archive now that's out there. Salute my fellow. Cheers, fellow archiver. People don't archive enough. Glad this uh, sister board is gone. Net positive for everyone. Yeah, the NYF Co. is gone. They tried to dox me on that site as well, and it's gone. I think they actually did get some information, but I, I can't say which information they got. But NYF Co. is gone, luckily. And it's archived. It's archived for the people who want it archived. The information that I have here, as you can see, it's archived for the betterment of everybody. That is all for right now. Of course, comment, like, and subscribe down below. Thank you for being here. Of course, I love having the conversations with you guys. I love having these things with you guys. And I do appreciate it whenever you guys do comment. Take a look at my description for my socials. There's a Discord. There's Twitter. There's other places that you can check me out. Twitch, etc. And also check on your screen right now because there might be a video that you might enjoy. Thank you.